The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, 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 TFNN opens the door to the future. Larry Pesamento, systems analyst, is your tour guide into the market futures. Want to see into the future? Well, climb aboard Larry's time machine and come with us. Larry takes your phone calls. Now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. This is the Futures Hour. Here's your host, Larry Pesamento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. We've got the Dow up 150. We've got well, 140. We've got the NASDAQ up uh, almost 60. The S&P up about 20. Uh, that's not to be unexpected because we have a new moon today. This is the beginning of the Chinese New Year, the year of the horse. So usually you buy on the new moon and sell on the uh, seven days afterwards. So we're going to see if this is going to be correct. That, that would bring us in to February 5th or 6th when we have the Bradley date due, but uh, we did not take out the lows of some of the indices yesterday. The New York Stock Exchange Index did not go below the low that we had on uh, last Friday. Um, there were a few others that didn't do that. The NASDAQ did because it gets a little squirrely with you know the, the high price stocks that are in there like Google and Apple, and then as you can see, it can do the same thing on the upside. So. Uh, the NASDAQ is a pretty difficult one to uh, gauge because it is, uh, you know, cap-weighted and price-weighted. And when you've got these real expensive stocks in there, those are the ones that really, you know, control what's happening with the market. Whereas with the New York Stock Exchange Index, that's not the case. It's just having a, a normal snapback rally, much like what uh, Basil was talking about previously. I don't see a whole lot of difference uh, in what he was saying and what I would be looking at today. Uh, but this could continue uh, today, tomorrow, could continue into Monday and possibly even uh, into Tuesday. Um, and Tuesday is the 4th, which is the uh, the Bradley date that we're looking at. So that will be interesting to watch. But I believe that the major trend has turned down. I don't think we're going to make new highs uh, in the Dow uh, or the New York Stock Exchange Index. We still could possibly do it in the NASDAQ because of the high price stocks. Uh, that are out there, but let's start out with the uh, with the commodities today. And I, I was going to talk about gold and silver, particularly because we mentioned this uh, chart yesterday in silver uh, in its relationship to gold. You'll see that silver has been incredibly weak over the past several weeks. Uh, it's been uh, unable to make new highs. It's had lower highs all along, and it just keeps breaking down. Whereas yesterday, gold was able to rally up and make a 61 percent retracement of the previous high. And yet we couldn't even come close to that with the uh, with the silver. And then when the market started to weaken, of course, silver gave up, you know, very very dramatically uh, to the downside. So uh, it's going to be fighting for its life here from the bull stance uh, very shortly here in the uh, in the silver market. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, after looking at it on the hourly chart, comparing it with gold. I want to put up the long-term weekly chart in silver because it has something that uh, we really need to watch because sometimes these things pop up uh, out of nowhere and if you're not expecting them, it gives you a chance to uh, you know to really take a look at uh, you know where you want to uh, uh, put a position on and we'll be looking at that right now. We're going to look at the uh, long-term weekly chart in silver. And uh, this goes back to 2009 when silver was trading at about 10, uh, just a little under $10 an ounce before it got all the way up to uh, $49 an ounce, uh, you know, two uh, short years later. And as you can see, uh, down at 1760, down about a dollar 60 per ounce from where we are now, uh, just a little under $18 per ounce. We have a 786 completing, and we also have a larger AB equals CD. Now, these are on the weekly chart, so these are these are very, very important patterns because of these price levels. Uh, if it, we got down there, the whole world, I mean, most of the people are bearish anyway, but the whole world would be bearish if it got down there, and that would be the place that you'd want to look to be a buyer of silver. So we still got silver to go about another dollar uh, uh, twenty on the downside down to about seventeen sixty per ounce that's the way it looks like from uh, my uh, technician's point of view here uh, it looks uh, very nice on on the weekly chart we've look, uh, we just looked at that we're going to look at it on the daily 
and as you can see um, I'll put this up again here so we'll be able to look at it the the rally that we had uh, couldn't make anything uh, uh, above the previous day's high uh, up around 2080 we could not make the 61 percent retracement where, where we were able to do that in the gold you'll see that silver lagged far behind and now silver is broken below uh, the 786 and it's trading right at the 786 coming off of the uh, December 31st uh, lows so there's still a chance it could turn from here but frankly it looks like it's going to go down one more time and take out those lows and then that will tell us that that's uh, you know where we're where we're going to be gold on the other hand has had a uh, pretty good run we I'll put up the hourly because it shows it uh, much uh, clearer of what we're looking at because we got up to that resistance points at 1282 uh, the other day and uh, if we take a look at it on the uh, short term here going over the last uh, several weeks in gold you'll see this retracement that we're talking about and today we made a perfect uh, ABCD in gold uh, when it was breaking to the downside we got down to 1238 uh, which was the 786 retracement of the low from uh, January 22nd and that completed a bullish Gartley down there at the 1238 so as long as gold can stay above that 1235 area uh, we would think that you'd have a, a chance for another leg uh, to the upside now realize that silver is far far weaker the problem that we're having folks is we're, we're, we don't have a lot of players I mean we've lost a lot of open interest players uh, on this move down uh, over the last 18 months so the, the, there's not new volume coming in there's not uh, uh, a whole lot of uh, changes in, in open interest I mean so that's uh, another thing that's uh, a little troublesome and silver of course is far weaker than the gold market and it's viewed as the poor man's silver or poor man's gold so uh, there's just no interest in it right now as a matter of fact all commodities are getting you know hammered really badly you know wheat corn beans all of them we're, we're going to go through them but they're all getting hit it's it's beginning to uh, you know look like the uh, the, the old story of deflation might be coming back because that's one thing that the Fed said they cannot uh, tolerate is a situation where you have a uh, you know deflation during this time. Now um, we will take a look here on the long term on gold because we've made that. Uh, this is the weekly chart that we're going to look at now because we have completed the uh, the weekly chart in on the 61 percent retracement. As long as we can stay above. 1170 per ounce I still think it has a chance to be uh, you know relatively bullish if it can hold hold that level and begin to uh, and, and begin to move uh, a little bit uh, higher but uh, we stopped right at our first resistance point and that's uh, you know basically what it's supposed to be doing we're going to take a look now uh, at the crude oil market because uh, we did the uh, we're doing the same thing we're running into some major resistance up here uh, at the uh, 786 level in uh, crude oil at the uh, 9850 per barrel level uh, but frankly it looks like we're ready to break out and uh, head up to the to at least the 103 level uh, in crude oil if we can get above this $99 per barrel level uh, in the oil market uh, the fundamentals you hear about all the time that there's too much oil around well uh, even though there's too much oil around it's still been able to rally from 92 to 99 without too much trouble so I, I uh, look at that with a grain of salt we did make that big butterfly top uh, in the crude way back uh, in August at the uh, 112 level we came down now we've tested the 786 perfectly twice at that 92 level and uh, so I, I think that is going to hold uh, as long as 92 holds uh, crude oil still has a, a strong positive bias at least up to the 103 level uh, which would be a 1.2 expansion of the previous swing that we had from par 100 down to uh, the 92 level so that would take us up to around 103 uh, per barrel and then we'll see if uh, the market has a tendency to accelerate through that level or that's going to act like a wrecking crew and stop the rally uh, in the crude oil so crude is at a very critical spot uh, in our charts as far as what we're looking at but it does have a bullish bias and uh, 
we've had uh, very few corrections. We only had one that came down to the 382 uh, earlier in the week. I uh, came in on Friday, and then since that time, we've been going higher. Folks, I want to share something for uh, educational purposes with you, and that is the uh, contract for natural gas yesterday uh, was in expiration. February natural gas was going off the board, and I want you to see what happens when you get uh, I wasn't involved in this, but a friend of ours who we all know was Rich Anderson was certainly involved. But if you will take a look at this, you're going to see an, an unusual chart. Um, I'm going to bring it up here. There we go. And then we'll, we'll see. You'll, you'll see that the market has given back uh, all of it. But you'll see how open interest will cause a short squeeze, and you'll you'll uh, you'll be able to see. You don't want to get involved with this now. Rich Anderson called me ahead of time saying there was a potential uh, short squeeze in uh, natural gas because there were so, there were so the commercials were very long the February contract that expired on the close and they needed the uh, the natural gas well they don't they actually don't deliver this stuff anymore it's all done on a contract basis and so if they don't have the contract they have to come in and buy the stuff and that causes it to go straight up this started when uh, when it was trading at about not, at 5.20 is when it really started to trade uh, to to trend a lot higher, and over the next hour and a half it moved six thousand dollars straight up. And I was watching it on time and sales about how much was being bought, and you would not believe on that February contract that was getting ready to expire. There were only like three or four hundred contracts uh, still outstanding, but every single it was traded in one lot or a two lot, never more than that. And it just kept going and going and going and going. And on the sell side, it was somebody buying. What happened to open interest on that big move up is that open interest collapsed. In other words, so many people left the market that it's vulnerable. And you can see what happened to the natural gas after that point. It came all the way back and dropped uh, almost the total gain that it made yesterday. And that's exactly what happened the silver back in September of 2012, if you'll remember, when we were up around that 49 level, we were going and looking at open interest every day to see that the open interest was either increasing or decreasing in, in the silver. Because if prices are going up and there's, there's no increase in open interest, it, that means the shorts are just covering. As soon as the shorts are done covering, the market will fall of its own weight. And so when you see a market like this, you have to check open interest at that time because if this were at the beginning of the month where there was no expiration, this could have been for real. It just could have been a, a new buying coming into the market. But when you check the open interest figures at Chicago Mercantile Exchange, you'll see that there was a tremendous drop in the uh, open interest, and that caused uh, you know this big drop that we had to the downside. Okay, we've got the uh, Dow Jones uh, up 144 on the day, uh, NASDAQ up about 60, 877-927-6648. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads.
You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, is going up in price again at the end of this month. Andy's weekly newsletter has delivered multiple profitable trades for his subscribers, even including a triple-digit winner within recent months. Right now is a perfect time to get a full month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy will also be hosting a subscriber event on Thursday, January 30th, Seasonality in Energy and Agricultural Commodities, that you can gain access to by simply signing up for a free trial to Andy Heck's newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report. A 30-day free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, a free 60-minute live online webinar with Andy Hecht, which will be archived, and you lock in the low price of $49 a month should you decide to continue after your 30-day free trial. Offers don't get much better than this. Act now before January is over and this offer passes you by. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks, and we were talking about the short squeeze that happened in the February natural gas yesterday. Uh, fortunately, with the quote system that I have, uh, I'm able to see all the bids and offers and the trades as they go. And I was comparing, you know, the February with the March. And uh, the February had virtually no open interest, but there were onesies and twosies of people that had to get out and had just kept running the market. And it was trading at a $0.10 cent premium to the, uh, to the March contract. And so when March finally got up there, February... February went off the board. And then there were no there were no more buyers up there, and then the market falls of its own weight. But it trades very nicely off the Fed numbers. Now, what I did was uh, I I, po I posted the uh, UNG. Uh, we several people through the months have asked about the this ETF for natural gas, and you can see that on this uh, particular uh, UNG chart, you'll see the two uh, really nice Gartleys uh, that that were there. I happen to know that that second Gartley was that was uh, that was there. The one that occurred right before the big run-up, that was one that was identified by the timing, the tar timing, uh, the art of timing the charts by uh, Tom O'Brien and David White, uh, their new program. It, it actually picked that out ahead of time. I don't trade stocks, but I saw that, and it was in a higher bottom and uh, uh, a beautiful 10-day pullback and an ABCD formation. So if you're looking for something that tries to find these patterns automatically, uh, they they found the one that works. It really does. It doesn't work perfectly, but boy, it works better than anything I've seen. 
and uh, it's something that you might want to take a look at if you want to find automatic Gartley patterns uh, on some of these things. And it does it on the bear side, and it does it on the bull side both. So uh, it's a good tool to have if you uh, you do it. It goes through thousands every day, and it tries to find the best ones. They usually get somewhere between 5 and 25 uh, different signals, and you can pick the one that uh, you particularly uh, like to uh, like to look at. Uh, the other uh, thing I would like to mention here, uh, this is the short segment, uh, is that we, we hear all the time about the, uh, the fact that uh, there's manipulation going on in silver and manipulation going on in gold. Folks, I, I'm not a believer in that. Uh, you know, these guys have so, these bankers have so many other ways uh, to make money besides manipulating uh, that, that I don't think they mess around with something like silver uh, or gold. That's, that's my personal opinion, of course. But we know that they do things uh, that are that are illegal because they're being fined left and right. But no, none of them go to jail. That to me is the, that that to me is the big problem. I mean, how can people do that and not be punished? You know, with some type of uh, uh, a sanction or incarceration or something like that. I know that's how Wall Street operates, but that that's wrong. There should be somebody like. Uh, you know, Volcker or Giuliano or Giuliani or one of these guys come in there and say, look, this is the, the buck stops here. When you guys do something like this, you pay the fine, but someone's going to, you know, someone's going to go to jail. So what do they do? They they go after somebody at uh, Steve Cohen's place at SAC Capital, and he'll do some time, you know, and, and, he, and he, maybe he should. But what about the other guys that get away with it? You know, that's just not a, it's not a fair assessment of what's really happening, uh, you know, in the markets. That's just, uh, that's just my, uh, that's my two cents worth for, for what I see. But I don't believe these markets are manipulated. And the second reason I don't believe that they're manipulated is the fact that they hit these Fibonacci numbers, uh, you know, right to the money. I mean, you know, they, they go right up to 618 or 786 or 127 or 1.618 and they stop like, uh, you know, concrete hit it. So if it were manipulated, uh, they could easily push it through and maybe they do sometimes. But, you know, the majority of these times these patterns work really nicely. And so you got to believe that there's not much manipulation going on. If it is, it's coming out from somewhere in outer space where natural law starts. And, uh, you know, that's why the numbers hold up as well as they do. So I don't try to think in terms of that, but you just never know if there is uh, manipulation. We'll, we'll never know. But I, I do know this, that in 1980, when uh, Bunker Hunt and his uh, brother Lamar and his other brother were uh, cornering the silver market, that was a, they were really trying to corner the market. And the, the problem was the people that they had short were the directors and the uh, floor, floor members of the, of the COMEX, and so what they did was they just changed the rules. They said only liquidation only, and you must put up 200% of the margin for silver. And silver at that time was, you know, 40, 50, almost $50 an ounce. So you had to put up a half a million dollars uh, to buy a contract or to sell a contract. So that just killed liquidity, and uh, it, you know, it, killed, it killed volatility, and the market went down for like 22 days. So anyway, we've got to take a little break here. The Dow up 136. trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter market insights Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the Dow Nasdaq and S&P plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks, and we've got our favorite uh, caller in from Philadelphia. John, are you there? Larry, uh, are we going to have Mr. Uh, Anderson coming on the call today? <laughs> Mr. Anderson is out on a boat. Fishing somewhere oh, the, uh, in uh, yes, somewhere in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Uh, he doesn't. Uh, that's not one of his favorite things to do. But he had uh, a commitment uh, to go out on a boat to go fishing, and and I told him I said, well, good luck with that, because he likes boats uh, a little bit better than I do, but he doesn't <laughs> like it that quite, much. So <laughs> he's out fishing. Say, you know, he'll be on. He'll be on with us next week. So. As a uh, as a child, I uh, I would have guessed you would have been a fisherman and a boater on the Wabash River. Oh well, not the Wabash because the Wabash was uh, you know it was very very muddy and stuff. But we we lived in Terre Haute where there was a lot of strip pits, you know, where the old coal mines were, and uh, we had wonderful catfish and bass. And as a matter of fact, my sister uh, lives on one of those lakes uh, that was formed uh, by these strip mining from Peabody coal. And she has a little, well, it's a nice house, a little a large cabin on this lake. And uh, they have nice fish in the lake. And the grandkids go out there and they stand on the dock and catch bluegill and crappie and some bass and stuff. And But uh, but it's a lot of fun fishing when you were a kid. Say, Larry, I, uh, I wanted to ask you just a detail on the stock market <clears throat> under the assumption that, in fact, the Dow and the NY, uh, NYSE indices did, in fact, peak uh, for some period of time, December 31st. 
Uh, is it possible or is it legitimate as you see it to look at the first leg down having completed actually Monday and that what's transpired since uh, the Monday afternoon bounce and into the bounce here Thursday, that this is in fact the corrective pattern that in fact is now three days old and might actually be nearing completion as compared to nearing the start of the bounce? Oh, I, I agree with that 100%, John. The reason why is the fact that the New York Stock Exchange Index, which is the one that really counts, and uh, it did not make new lows uh, from Mon uh, from Friday, nor did the Dow Jones Transportation, which, you know, had that horrible that horrible 5% uh, break. Uh, neither one of those took out the lows from uh, Monday. And so what I'm thinking is is that you know that this new moon can come in several days earlier several it's got two day orb on either side so you know we could be in the middle of that uh, that cycle right now but I, I don't think we'll get much more than a than a five day rally so that would give us Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday it may be a rally tomorrow uh, and then uh, you know we should be we should be starting down again I would believe next week now if it, if it continues on into early next week uh, then we could get some more. But remember, John, this has been one. This has been the biggest bull of all times. I mean, we we're bigger than uh, the one that went up in '29. You know, it's uh, been going on for how many? We 427 days now where we've not had a 10% correction in the S&P 500. And every time the market breaks big, 300 points, you know, doesn't even phase anybody. The next day. Uh, you know, they have good news on uh, Google or app, uh, well, not Apple, but good news on Facebook or Google, and that moves the whole market. I mean, it's literally one stock triggers it all, and away they go. And uh, that's just the nature of, of, uh, of trading because of the fear and greed that's out there. That's, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a market of stocks. It's not a stock market, as I was told. Indeed. Larry, I wanted to uh, uh, next uh, ask you, about something I'm aware Arch Crawford <clears throat> is uh, focusing upon with his astrocycle work. I know he is uh, looking at or considering the, f uh, the fact that uh, market movements may in fact be partially governed by the, um, the current phase of the Mars-Uranus cycle. Uh, can you elaborate upon uh, what his thinking and what that uh, cyclic influence uh, might be up to at present? Well, Mars is the most uh, negative planet uh, in astrologers' terms, and whenever it's in, in conjunction or opposition with one another pl with another planet, it has a negative connotation. That much I remember from when I was writing my first book. I, I don't talk to Arch every day. I talk to him maybe once every 10 days or so. Uh, I know he's uh, is still bearish and very bearish, and um, He's looking for, you know, whether this uh, rally is going to last three to five days or maybe even ten days. But he doesn't believe that it's going to uh, make a new high uh, above the high we made on December 31st. And the reasoning behind that is the fact that these negative cycles are starting to kick in. And, and after March um, 17th, I believe, is the date that he told me that it really, it really becomes negative. And that's when we will, you know, start to see, you know, more negativity. But... Uh, right now, it's a little too early. We're just having another correction, just like we had back in, uh, you know, late November. You know, it's the same type of correction, and uh, we, we have to see how much it rallies. But the thing is that the New York Stock Exchange Index is not rallying that much. It's just barely making a, a 382 retracement today from that whole move down, uh, you know, over the last eight days. Yeah. So if it doesn't get much higher, if we don't get much higher than 150 points in the Dow today, and then tomorrow starts down again, that was a three-day rally, and then look out below. I, I said on yesterday's show that we had to close below those lows on Monday. It was very important for the indices to do that. And uh, I don't think any of them did. They all bounced off the bottom to... Uh, to get to, to get to be higher on the day and didn't go below those lows so that tells you that that cycle low that came in on last Friday was was very significant and when we take that out then you'll look at the next move down the Nasdaq did take it out but there again you know that's due to Apple and Google and you know four or five other of those monsters and you know that's what happened in 2000 too you had those heavily weighted stocks and you you have to 
you know, put that into effect. Yes, indeed. Uh, Larry, I uh, wanted to uh, lastly ask you about the silver market. Now, of course, silver broke 1945 early this morning, which, which negated a, a very, very short-term, potentially bullish setup. And now that we've gotten down to 19, I can't help but think that uh, silver is poised to uh, retest, if not take out, that June low of 1820, which was never, which was never penetrated back in December. If that were to occur, if in fact the silver at 1920 continues to drift down and undercuts 1820, can you uh, share what your thoughts might be, your advanced thinking might be on what the buy setup might be, please? Yes, John. Uh, I covered that at the beginning of the show. We had a uh, we had a segment about uh, about the silver market because I, the fact is I'll bring that up and show you again because I, on the long term weekly chart we are going to be looking at a situation where you have a um, if you give me one second here I will get the uh, get the chart up here and we will take a look at it again and uh, at least I hope we will. Uh, I don't think I took it off. Oh dear, just give me one second here. The trouble is when I, I'm, I'm working with new software now, and uh, I have to pull it up. Just give me one second, John. But what we're doing here in in the silver is we've got a chance for silver to come down and test that uh, 1800 level. Right. Uh, actually, the number is 1760 is what I'm looking at, and that's the long term 786. And it would also be, and this would be a weekly chart that I'm putting up here, and you'll see that it'll be testing the uh, 1760 level, and uh, it will be right at the uh, long-term 786 retracement. It would still be in a bull market from a from a long-term perspective, but from a short-term perspective, you know, we still got more to go to the downside. Silver has been acting very weak for well over 10 days. We've been mentioning that. In fact, you were the, the first one to alert me to it uh, two weeks ago when you sent me one of your emails showing that the silver was lagging gold by so much. And, mm -hmm. and the, op the open interest in silver is just, you know, there's no, no new buyers coming in. So, mm -hmm. they, they, you know, it's not much, of a, not much of a chance for it to rally if you don't get new buyers coming in. So, but 1760. If it goes below that, you're going to be looking at nine dollars silver again, in my opinion. And we could be looking at deflation, and that's the thing that could could be causing uh, a lot of these things, uh, you know, to have problems in the market. Gotcha, gotcha. So, if if uh, 18, if the June low, which was 1820, if that is violated, and uh, but the market tests and holds 1760. That would be uh, the uh, the bottom picking uh, setup you'd you'd expect with a stop just under that seventeen sixty fifth seven eight six mark. Yes, and John, stop and think now where we are now. We're at nineteen ten, so we need to go down a dollar and a half. That's seventy five hundred dollars, correct? Yep. Yep. Okay. So, and we've got gold at twelve forty two, and we know that the old low in gold was around eleven seventy. So that's seven thousand dollars there. So that means that gold might retest eleven seventy, <laughs> and silver could retest seventeen sixty. Sure. And that that could be the time to 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 be looking at it. And the reason why it'll be a good time is because you don't have to risk much there. Exactly. Because it's not going to go much below seventeen sixty if it's any good, or gold's not going to go much below. 1170. You know, gold had a really nice rally of eighty dollars, and then it stopped dead cold up at the 1282 Sunday night. Uh, yep. You know, with the uh, you know the market uh, you know starting to look like it was going to melt down again, but in fact it turned around, and you know they so gold sells off another you know fifty dollars, and that's just one thing after another. The VIX has never you know really gone crazy to the upside. You know, it's had a good rally right up at the 618 with lower tops. There's no fear in the market as yet. Uh, Basil brought that out. You've got to get that thing above uh, 18. And then once it's above 18 and then 20 and then above 20, you just start adding five points, 25, 30, 35, if it, if it does that. But, you know, maybe it is different this time. <laughs> Who knows? Very good. Uh, Larry, thanks so much. Uh, I appreciate it. I'll be looking for that 1760 on silver. 
Yes, and we're watching these grain markets, too, because we're at some real critical levels coming down here in wheat and corn and beans. And I'm going to be covering those uh, on, the, on the last part of this show today because I think they're, they're getting to levels that might be important where we could be actually turning around in some of these, uh, you know, these commodities that will give us some low-risk buying opportunities. Thanks for calling in, John. We always appreciate your uh, efforts and your technical expertise. Thanks so much, Larry. You bet. Okay, folks, we got the Dow is up 160 and uh, 163. We got the Nasdaq up 62. It's the uh, the oil gusher of the uh, indexes. It always moves a lot farther and faster because you've got stocks like you know Google and Priceline and all these others that are uh, cap and price weighted, and that makes it uh, you know real easy for them to. Uh, move it a lot, both up and down. So that's the that's the key. The uh, S and P's even up another twenty points. So, um, but we're still, you know, if you stop and think, you know, we closed last Friday in the S and P at uh, seventeen eighty one, and we're at seventeen uh, ninety two right now. So we're ten points higher than we were last Friday. Uh, the Nasdaq is a little bit higher than that, but that's pretty much, you know, what we're looking at. The next thing that I wanted to cover uh, is the soybean market here, and uh, it's just completing a uh, very close to completing a Gartley pattern. Uh, we missed it by about three cents uh, this morning, and we've had a you know pretty strong twenty cent rally. Whether this is going to be the bottom or not, uh, I'm not sure. It was very close to completion, but uh, it's not fully completed, so I have to wait and see. Uh, if the market can come down one more time, it needs to get down to 12.60 per bushel. Uh, right now, we're up on the day about eight cents, and it's trading at 12.81 uh, per bushel after uh, after the rally. But we've had higher bottoms in here since August. We had a higher bottom in November, and we're having a higher bottom now here uh, in February. And so we'll be uh, looking at some pretty good volatility. We're going to have more volatility in all the markets, folks. Uh, uh, I know it's the year of the horse for the Chinese New Year, and I think that horse will be running in both directions, up and down. So we'll probably have some really good uh, volatility, and that's what we really like to see. Uh, we've uh, we've had some uh, really low prices uh, recently in the uh, the grain complex, and we want to uh, be able to find some of these uh, that will be able to be uh, easy to see, uh, at least as far as uh, something to buy. Now, one that is uh, really close to uh, uh, a very long-term uh, buy uh, area, in fact, it came within a quarter of a cent uh, today, was the wheat market. And I want to put that up here to let you folks look at it, because that's forming right now. And uh, if you're interested in being a wheat farmer, uh, you can buy wheat here for around 552 a bushel, and you don't have to risk more than about a nickel. So you get to be a wheat farmer for $250. You don't have to buy any combines or plows or seed or fertilizer or hire a sharecropper like myself to uh, run the place for you. So this is what I'd be looking for uh, in the wheat market is, uh, is a potential uh, buy position uh, here. It's been going down for a long time, but it's at the 1.618. Got the Dow up 60, 163. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. 
Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin, here on TFNN. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks, and I had a request to put a chart up of copper, and so I put in the uh, long-term chart, the weekly chart of copper, and you can see the divergence between uh, the stock market uh, over the past 18 months and also the copper market. Copper has been going lower and uh, you know the stocks have been going higher and uh, they everyone attributes that to the, uh, the QE1, 2, and 3 programs that uh, the Fed has had and so that could be the reason. Uh, the next uh, chart that I posted into um, Tiger TV is the uh, chart for copper on the daily basis and it shows that uh, we reached a Gartley pattern here uh, today down at the um, uh, 322 level per pound and we're, we're due for uh, a rally. We've been coming down for the past month. We made our high back on the new moon of um, the 31st of December and we have a new moon today so if that cycle is working it should reverse and we should get ready to have a rally in copper and we are down 14 days from the high we made uh, back on the 14th of, um, of December. So there's another reasoning why we should be getting some type of a rally in copper. How much it will be, uh, no one knows. No one ever knows the answer to that, but uh, that's what we're looking at when we're, when we're watching you know, this particular uh, commodity. 
it's one of the few commodities that has not uh, you know participated in uh, you know the big move to the upside like we had in uh, well almost a big move like we had in gold and, and things like that but it's it's still a spot where uh, it's going to uh, have at least a little bit of a bounce uh, right now we're about f uh, three hours from the uh, New York close and uh, we've got the Dow up 160 and we've got the NASDAQ up uh, 60 and uh, S&P up 22 so it's been a very very bullish day the odds of it rolling over uh, at late in the day is uh, rather t relatively rare but you know if it's a bear market sometimes these things will flip over and uh, we'll see how much the rally is going to bring us remember we went from 1848 uh, in the S&P uh, we went all the way down to 1767 so we dropped 80 points so a uh, 382 retracement is 30 points back and that's uh, right where we are right now is we're at a 382 retracement back in the uh, the S and P futures uh, as we as we speak, we're almost at the same level in the um, uh, New York Stock Exchange index, and it's taken us uh, uh, four days to get here. You know, we made the bottom on Monday, so we've had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we've used up four days of trading energy to get to this spot. Now, whether it's going to go up more or not, I don't know. I can just tell you this: I'm bearish. I believe in the bot the Bradley model is locked on pretty tightly this time. It looks really good. The patterns completed on time, uh, especially the transportations. Uh, you know, had that huge break, and that certainly means something. They they've scared a few people, but like the VIX is telling us, it didn't scare very many people. So it's not really uh, it's not really out of the woods yet in any of these things, uh, at least from the uh, the berry side. And maybe it is different this time, and maybe it goes up forever. Because if it makes new highs from here, it could go up forever. Well, I don't really think forever. It might go up for some more, but who knows? But at least we're going to have some great volatility, and that's the that's the best part of this: the fact that we're having, you know, tremendous volatility, and that's what we love to see when we trade pattern recognition. Like I mentioned before, uh, if you're interested in Gartley patterns, you should really take a look at what Tom O'Brien has put together with David White on the art of timing the charts because it picks out these Gartleys automatically for you. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. You're watching Tiger TV.